indeed, as you said, and I've been serving as an ambassador in Ireland, in Hungary, and in India. And with regards to the theme of today, global sourcing and innovation, I found actually some interesting trends. The one was in Ireland, I saw very much the rise of call centers. And Ireland was doing a great job there. And then I was thinking, how could the Netherlands react to that? And then I found one of the enormous strengths of the Netherlands, which is our diversity. We could have, we, we did have, actually, we did create call centers where people who were calling were actually answered in their own language. And not only in Dutch, it was English, it was French and German, Spanish. I don't know whether we had Magyar, but perhaps we have, it could not be, perhaps it, it, it could have even been possible in, in Hungarian as well. So this was one interesting thing at that particular time, which was around the beginning of the 90s. Then, four years later, I was in Budapest, around the millennium change, the Y2K, and there I saw another trend, which was the um, transfer of production facilities by Netherlands companies to Hungary. Um, and there again, I was thinking how the Netherlands could react, but I didn't have to do that because I was only a diplomat and Dutch companies are doing it. And the reaction of Dutch companies was actually that we, we, we actually we changed the mass production to other countries and we kept for ourselves production for some very much niche markets in the sense that, for instance, shipbuilding, we do not have much apart from dredgers. We are building huge dredgers, highly sophisticated, but also we are building yachts now for very rich people in the world. And that's the Netherlands. Um, shoe, mass shoe production is not in the Netherlands anymore, but we do have a shoe production in the Netherlands. So this is the answer. So the first one was call centers, multi cultural, the multilingual uh, facilities we had in the second one was production, and there we found our niche markets where we could still produce. Uh, by the way, being in Hungary those four years, I saw already in that time even production facilities shifting even from Hungary even more eastwards. Now, the last four years were India. My second stint, by the way, I was 82, 85, but then India had not really woken up in the same way as it has now. And then I, there I saw in India that first only the big Dutch companies, but more and more medium and smaller sized companies were shifting also production facilities, but even more so service activities. And there you have in the last category more the idea of indeed what this global sourcing, offshore outsourcing and captive outsourcing, uh, captive offshoring, captive offshore you do it your own company, offshore outsourcing you do it to a third party, there this much very much comes into play. Um, producing the Netherlands, they do in, in, in India, very much all ranging from electronic goods, technical ones via paints to, uh, to gherkins and agricultural produce. Um, services, yes, BPO, but the interesting other um, the business process outsourcing. But the interesting other element is that you see a trend in more value added activities being outsourced or offshore. That means that you see also research and development being outsourced now. You see much more high tech, I would say, um, in between brackets, um, in between hyphens, um, uh, high tech um, offshore and outsource business processing outsourcing taking place. So there you see that um, India moves up the value chain, I would say, with regard to this particular development. So these were three trends. And the, three, the third trend in towards India, I definitely think that the Netherlands still has to wake up in the sense that we should be very much more aware of what's happening at the moment and what, should, what are the consequences for the Netherlands. And luckily enough, and this is my final remark, luckily enough, uh, the Netherlands government in its present uh, government uh, coalition agreement has as the second pillar innovation. And I think when someone asked me what should the Netherlands do, I said you should, you should do three things, innovate, innovate, and innovate. One more question, actually. You mentioned about the strengths of the European Union uh, in connection with the globalization and also some of the weaknesses that, that maybe people uh, from Western Europe should, should pay more attention to. Can you please reiterate that? Uh, I think that would be a very important uh, conclusion. No, that was not in my opening remarks, as you noticed. It was only as a reaction to a question by uh, one of the, the participants today to Dr. Kalam, and uh, Dr. Kalam was uh, kind enough not to go into the weakness of the Netherlands because there was a specific question because he was a visitor. When I looked at it from outside to the Netherlands, and I've been posted many times in the Netherlands itself as well, since 1980, I've been in and out all the time, done one after the other. Um, the, the, the danger I see, and sorry for saying so, but very much the danger that I see is that the Netherlands becomes complacent, self-complacent. Um, in the Netherlands, we say, it has to, it has to be, we, we should be able to do this. 
And I, I would say uh, we should be allowed to do this. And I would say what we should be allowed to do this should also not be allowed to do this. Um, het moet toch kunnen, het moet toch ook niet kunnen. Um, Self-complacency, I think, is a danger. It's a risk, I would say, in the sense that you think everything goes well. Indeed, we have economic growth. There is employment. But there will be another time. There will be coming another time. And we have to prepare for that. And you have to prepare for that other time in the time that things go well. Because then you have the the space in order to get things done. When things go wrong, you have no money, you cannot really adjust. So the time to adjust, I think, is now. Ambassador Nihet, thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the event today. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure talking to the alumni of Nairobi. Thank you.